This uh, hearing of the Higher Education Finance and Policy Committee to order. Um, we have two bills in front of us today. Um, I did uh, have one little uh, message to relay from uh, Chair Tomasoni. Um, a little awkward, but uh, he did want to have the committee know that even though he sits uh, and is listening in, uh, he wishes that everyone would address uh, me as chair uh, instead of vice chair. Um, I'm, I'm good either way, but uh, the formality is to refer to the chair, so we would ask all, all people uh, do that. And um, I appreciate that, Senator Tomasoni, that uh, you're, you're watching the formalities of the Senate. So um, we are going to go, uh, we're going to start with uh, Senator Eichhorn's bill, Senate file 2965, being he's not a member of the committee, so that he can get on his way and do some other things. So, uh, Senator Goggin, would you like to uh, move Senate file 2965 to be before us? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I move uh, Senate file 2965. All right, Senator Eichhorn, to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have an amendment. Would you like me to describe the, the bill first, or would you like to take the amendment first? It is an author's amendment, is that it, correct? That's correct, Mr. All Chair. All right, why don't we, uh, uh, it's formality to just take an author's amendment. So uh, Senator Goggin moves the A3 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, motion passes. Uh, to your bill as amended, Senator Eichhorn. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks for the opportunity to present this important bill to help us get more law enforcement students into our two- and four-year universities. So this bill will establish a new grant program to be administered by the Office of Higher Education for students pursuing a law enforcement associate degree, which provides an annual grant of $1,500 to eligible students, uh, and the bill imposes a $3,000 lifetime limit. Uh, with the amendment, it does make a few small changes. Uh, it will open the program up to not only two-year schools, but also four-year schools and uh, people seeking uh, approved post-board certificate programs if they already have had a degree. It also raises the lifetime limit uh, for associate's degrees. It would be state 3,000 or those for bachelor's degrees it would raise to 6,000. We think it's a really important bill because, again, we've seen a lot of these programs throughout the state uh, have declining programs in my own district at Bemidji State and then uh, in, neighboring, in Senator Tomasoni's district at Hibbing Community College. They have a phenomenal uh, law enforcement program there. And there have been declines in those, and we think this is just one small way that can help encourage uh, our next generation of law enforcement professionals to go to those programs. So it's a pretty simple bill. Um, again, that amendment just makes it so that all of our students would be able to access this regardless of whether they're going for that two or four year program. And I do it, we do have one testifier, so I'm hoping we can hand it over to them so they can tell you a little bit more about how important this program is for our students. Absolutely, so we have with us uh, Ms. Tanya Gladney, uh, the law enforcement program coordinator at the University of St. Thomas. Uh, Ms. Gladney, please introduce yourself for the record and begin with your testimony. Thank you, my name is Tanya Gladney, and thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Thank you for the opportunity to testify on SL2965, authored by Senator Icon. My name is Tanya Gladney, again. <laughs> I'm an associate professor and law enforcement coordinator at the University of St. Thomas in the Department of Justice and Society Studies. I serve as the professional peace officer education coordinator for our law enforcement program. I have a background in law enforcement. I was an officer with State Capitol Police in Jackson, Mississippi for 10 years. While I am a post board member, I am not speaking on behalf of the board. I am speaking on my experience as the PPO coordinator for our law enforcement program. As the PPO coordinator, I advise all students in our criminal justice program who wish to pursue a career in law enforcement. I, I advise students on the requirements on how to be a, a peace officer in the state of Minnesota. Thank you, for, thank you for considering the cost of pursuing a career in law enforcement and presenting a bill for direct grant support for students. With this amendment today, the bill will support students pursuing an associate's degree and a four-year degree. As a PPO coordinator at a four-year school, students who are pursuing a four-year degree and a career in law enforcement will greatly benefit from this grant. In our program and additional four-year programs, 
students can take advantage of additional opportunities such as internships with the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Students can take advantage of CSO positions, which are community service officer positions with different police departments. But most of our students who, are, who declare criminal justice and are deciding a career path in law enforcement, that is considered one of our most common career paths. And as students advance through the program and they learn the expense for skills, AKA the police academy, they often decide on a different career path or they would delay attending skills until they can secure the funds. This is, this is a common pattern that I have experienced over the years when advising students who are interested in a career in law enforcement. They just simply don't have the additional funds to attend a skills program. There are 27 post-secondary schools with post-approved law enforcement programs that include four-year schools. With the consideration, there are two-year and four-year post-approved law enforcement programs. Adding four-year schools would also support producing quality candidates for the workforce, and, and specifically the workforce of law enforcement. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to the community. Thank you, Ms. Gladney. Um, members, are, oh, we do have questions, so <laughs> uh, Senator Claussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Glad Gladney, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly? It is. You are. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, the, qu the question that I have, um, as I understood it, you offer a two-year and a four-year degree in law enforcement? No, we only offer a four-year degree. Okay, a four-year yes. degree. <laughs> A four-year degree. Uh, St. Thomas has a two-year program, but the law enforcement program is in our undergraduate four-year degree program. In the four-year, I'm sorry, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In the four-year degree program, do you include the skills training, or is that something that individual students then must uh, uh, do on their own? Ms. Great Gladney. question. We, great question. We do not have a skills program with the four-year private school. When our students complete the bachelor's in criminal justice, and for those who are specifically law enforcement track, they will attend a skills program of their choice, and that's where the additional expense comes in. And so as they are pursuing their career in criminal justice, they will get a bachelor's uh, in criminal justice and pursue the skills program. And I noticed that they tend to stop at that point because they, in some cases, they have to work to secure the funds. In some cases, they just have to delay until they can afford to attend skills. Okay. Senator Kloss, another. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a follow-up. Uh, you also mentioned that you're a member of the Post Board. I am, but I'm okay. not speaking on behalf of the Post Board. Sure, I understand. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I continue. Um, could you provide uh, for us what the cost would be to an individual student uh, to pay for that skills training on their own? Ms. Glenn. On their own. Oh yes, sorry. Uh, it's between uh, I would say thirty-five hundred to four thousand uh, for students to attend skills. Okay. And that's and and that could be more if they if they select housing at that particular skills program. Would would that be uh, for one so year maybe, or the whole program? The whole program. So that would be for the nine to ten weeks uh, skills uh, training. Senator Clausen. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Senator Putnam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Icarn, for bringing this bill to our attention. Uh, uh, thank you, members, and a, a special thank you to um, uh, my friend David. And I hope that you realize that that's a more important honorarium than chair uh, and that you accept it. Uh, no offense to you, Senator Rarick. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that we're having this conversation. It's incredibly important, not just because of what it says about what is essentially a bipartisan or hopefully nonpartisan commitment to public safety. Uh, laws don't have parties. Criminals don't have parties. Safety doesn't have a party. This isn't about a partisan issue. It's about the people and about the sense of safety that we can have, but also about a commitment to law enforcement officers. Uh, you respect people that you invest in. And this is an opportunity to invest in folks who do that work of law enforcement and not just support them financially, but demonstrate our respect for the training that goes into doing that job well. So I am grateful that we have a conversation uh, today about how best to support people who go into law enforcement in terms of their training, but also how much we respect the skill that needs to go into doing that job. 
Uh, now, I did have my own bill uh, that uh, was duly submitted and uh, extended some of these provisions that we're discussing today uh, that actually enable the full uh, coverage of tuition for the first two years of school. Um, I'm not so interested in that bill as I am that we talk about the best way to solve the problem that we have before us today. Uh, so no sour grapes about it not being on the agenda. I just want to make sure we focus on the problem that we got before us today, and that's with this incredible challenge that we face of supporting people to go into law enforcement, and incidentally also supporting our institutions of higher education that are themselves suffering a serious crisis in enrollment. Uh, this is a win-win and a good good in every direction. But uh, given some of the costs that we face, uh, Mr. Chair, I offer the A4 amendment to the amendment. Okay, um, Senator Putnam, I believe it'll just be an amendment to the bill as amended. It's not. Okay, thanks correct. for that. Um, and members, because of our remote nature, um, as the amendment comes forward, we'll have to take a brief pause so we can get put online uh, so folks who are remote can see it. And then we'll begin we'll give people a chance to see it before we start discussing. So with, if there are amendments, we will be taking brief pauses so that that can be posted online. Mr. Chair. Senator Eichhorn. I do not have my laptop with. Is there a paper copy available? Mr. Chair? I can tell you what it is, but it's not going to do enough. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, I am sending it up for print right now, and then I will also upload it publicly to the page. Um, maybe we can go over the language while it comes down, but it will be posted publicly and is getting printed as we speak. Okay, that, that sounds like a good idea. Um, we can. I have a we, we will begin a discussion on it uh, while we're waiting, but we will not take any action until it has been posted and we have paper copies here. So, uh, Senator Putnam, uh, to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for my patience as I learn protocol. I appreciate that. And our collective patience as we deal with technology as it is. Um, uh, the essence of this uh, uh, amendment is that it simply, essentially doubles the amounts that are currently in Senator Eichhorn's bills. Uh, while Senator Eichhorn's bill is a great step in the right direction, it doesn't quite provide enough financial support, for, in my estimation, to really help folks get through their years in, in education. If you look at some of the, uh, the cost of tuition for a two-year degree um, uh, at the schools that offer uh, post-board certified degrees, it's an average of about $6,000 a year. Uh, and when you add the possibility of additional expense of uh, post-training uh, afterwards, that could be another, as we've just heard, three or $4,000. So, uh, and then if you look at the, the programs in four-year institutions, they're upwards of $9,000 a year. So essentially what uh, my amendment does is it increases the amount that we would be putting towards these incredibly important programs that we all understand and that we all believe in to make them a little bit more practically effective. Um, and moreover, it also I think is a further statement of support for, and respect for the folks who do these jobs. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, my earlier bill was one that covered basically all the costs uh, for a two-year degree, and that was developed in, in concert with the, uh, 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 some folks uh, at the MPPOA uh, and uh, other folks involved in law enforcement. And I think there's, there's, there's those two things that we need to deal with here. One is the actual practical consequences and the ability to get through an education. Um, the other is uh, inspiring people to want to go into this industry. And the third, which is more than two, the third is then demonstrating our respect for folks who go into these industries. So for that reason, I would uh, uh, urge a, a positive vote uh, on my amendment to the bill as amended um, and ask for a roll call. Uh, roll call has been requested. Roll call will be granted. Um, quick question, Senator Putnam, I may have missed it uh, in your description. Did you give us the amount, dollar amount? It that, doubles uh, the current amounts that are in Senator Eichhorn's bill. So 1,500 becomes 3,000. 6,000 becomes 12. Uh, and I believe there's the, the third number as and, well. Yeah, I was going to ask. Did it also then for the four-year program uh, double that to 12,000? It does. Uh, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, thank you, Senator Putnam. And I guess uh, as we're waiting, um, the one thing that I will uh, mention as we, as we talk about this, um, you know, and we have many areas uh, that we're going to be looking at this year, not only in this committee, but in other areas, whether it be, you know, nursing, uh, corrections officers, uh, a great number of areas that have been stressed and put a high demand on. Um, and I think um, we'd probably all be open to some higher numbers in here, um, but we're going to have to see what our target is for this committee as well. And, 
and definitely once the target is known, uh, we would probably be open so to raising these numbers if um, if our target would allow. Um, but I think you know at this point, uh, like I said, I appreciate um, appreciate it. Uh, but we can also ask uh, Senator Eichhorn uh, his feelings towards uh, the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just received a copy of the amendment, and yeah, pr pretty simple, just raising those amounts. I, I certainly support spending more money. I don't know where our targets are. We had to start somewhere. Uh, this seemed like a reasonable ask in working with both the leadership staff and with some of our uh, institutions of higher education. They thought this was a good start, and so in working in conjunction with them, that's where we came up with our numbers. I know you guys have a lot to work through. Uh, as you get to the point where you're putting your omnibus bill together, um, that may be a bigger discussion. Then again, I don't know what the target is. I'm not privy to that information. In fact, I don't, I don't assume that it'll come out for a while until we know what our February forecast is. So, you know, it's certainly up to the committee to decide. Um, but I do think we need to find as much ways as we can in this area and other areas to support people that are going to go into this profession. And I think that's one of the greatest ways we can serve them to help encourage people to get into this profession. So um, it's certainly, it's certainly a, a good thing to try to do. I don't disagree with what you're trying to do, but I will leave it up to the discretion of the chair. I know Senator Thomas Oney and Senator Rarick are going to have a lot of work to do to put their omnibus bill together. Um, and it's probably a better time to consider those different dollar amounts once that's being put together. Those are my two cents worth, but I will respect the committee's decision. Yeah, uh, and thank you. And we did some quick checking and we've been checking around and uh, we actually uh, were getting word that uh, we're good with uh, increasing these numbers. So um, I'm going to be supporting the amendment. Senator Claussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That That's uh, in a uh, bipartisan support for this committee. I think that's that's really nice that uh, people have agreed to that. But I just wanted to add a couple things. I know I've been talking with some state patrol. They've lost 619 people in the last three years that have either retired, have moved on to another force, uh, law enforcement agency, or retired. And uh, we've got last year, uh, we provided, if I remember correctly, I think it was uh, 46 new state patrol positions, and I know as of today, uh, they've been able, unable to fulfill, I think, half of those. So I, I'm hopeful that this bill, a bipartisan bill, is going to go a long ways to, to really uh, make a difference. Thank you, Senator Claussen. And yeah, I think we've, uh, especially in this area, we have seen, uh, whether it's state patrol, uh, city of Minneapolis, or a number of other uh, agencies, like I said, as mentioned, as well as corrections officers, uh, and we've been trying to address that uh, with, uh, so there are a lot of things that uh, we're going to be looking at. And I think uh, another message uh, for folks as well that um, as we talk about this uh, specifically for law enforcement, it doesn't mean that we're not uh, uh, aware of the other areas in need and that there won't be other bills in other committees uh, to address that. We're not forgetting others as we discuss this either. So just so people are aware of that too. Okay. Is there any other discussion, Senator Putnam? And Mr. Chair, I'd like to recall, uh, recall my call for a roll call vote. All right, thank you, Senator Putnam. Uh, there, we, uh, we will not do a roll call. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor uh, let me get it. of the A4 amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Motion passes. Um, Senator Eichhorn, back to your bill. Do you have any other testifiers or? Mr. Chair, I don't have any other testifiers, but just a couple closing comments if, if you're to that point. Members, do we have any other questions before we go to closing comments? Senator Claussen. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, is there uh, an, an appetite to move this to general orders? Um, that I guess I will have to check. I think our intention was to lay this over, um, but we can sure check with uh, our folks and we could bring it back up at a, another uh, meeting and move it being we've already had the discussion. So I don't know that I can uh, 
get approval on that today, but we can definitely, uh, if there's an appetite for that, um, we could do that at another hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Putnam. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may speak in uh, behalf of Senator Costin's uh, question. Um, while uh, opening up higher education to people who want to go into law enforcement isn't going to stop a carjacking yesterday, it's still something that I think has a sense of urgency to it, not only in terms of getting people into these industries as soon as possible and getting the education they need as soon as possible, but letting law enforcement know that we've got their back. So I would hope that there is a way that we could move this to general orders as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Eichhorn, uh, closing comments on your bill. Thank you. And on that, I would again uh, respect whatever the committee decides on that. I know you guys have a lot of work in front of you. and. Uh, I, I really appreciate that we are having this discussion today and that your committee and others are, are really taking a hard look at this. And I think this is a phenomenal way to help our students. I know as I think of my own position on the K-12 committee, uh, we talk about funding students. And this is something we can do to fund students that I think will ultimately make a difference to hopefully turn the tide to get more people into this profession. I know as I talk to folks in my district, um, they're concerned. They're concerned about their own communities, but they're also concerned about coming to Minneapolis and St. Paul because of the violence, because of what's going on. And I think if they knew that there was a full police force that was there to protect them when they came to these other cities, and even in their own cities, that that would go a long way to helping help with some of their their worries about coming to these other communities. And I think it'll help our law enforcement folks as well. Um, because they need somebody else to have their back. They're all, they're running on empty. They're running, they're running thin just because they don't have enough people. So I think this, this backup is going to be extremely important for those individuals that are already in the career. So I thank you for taking the time today to take a look at this and, and having such a favorable conversation. Thank you, Senator Eichhorn. Um, with that, Senate file 2965 will be laid over and possibly reconsidered in committee as well. All right. Thank you, Senator Eichhorn. Thank you. Uh, now we will move on to uh, Senate File 2964, and I will move that uh, bill to have before us. And um, members, uh, this is a Senator Jasinski bill, um, one of the motions on the floor uh, this morning was to add me on as an author, so um, I will serve as the presenting uh, senator, but uh, basically turn it over to the testifiers uh, to, to discuss the bill. Um, the the simple uh, beginning explanation is, uh, you know, we have workforce development scholarships uh, in place, um, and this is going to expand those scholarships uh, to law enforcement, as well as increasing some funding specifically for that area. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to our first testifier, uh, Mr. Richard Watkins from Riverland Community College. Mr. Watkins, please identify yourself for the record and begin with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is Rich Watkins. I am the program coordinator of the criminal justice program here at Riverland Community College in Austin. And I would like to thank uh, the committee for inviting me to testify here today. Um, I am a little bit saddened though that uh, Senator Jasinski, my senator um, from my district, I do live in Fairville, is unable to attend here today. And um, I wish him a speedy recovery from his um, incident that he was involved in. With me today is Priscilla Solorzano, along with our field experience class. Uh, this is one of the classes that we do offer here at our college for our law enforcement program. And um, they are basically to view this today and to see how um, our state government does work. So we're very excited. And if I may, Mr. Chair, I would just like to real quickly have our students just introduce themselves. Yes, that would be wonderful if each could introduce themselves and uh, the community that they came from, and uh, that would be great. Hi, I'm Priscilla Solorzano from Glenville, Minnesota. I'm Nathan Gilbertson. I'm from Elgin, Minnesota. Michaela Molly from Geneva, Minnesota. I'm Renee Garcia from Bronx, New York. I'm Carol Evers. I'm from Tampa, Minnesota. I'm Maxwell Schumacher from Danville, Indiana. Marshall Peterson from Geneva, Minnesota. Haley Van Havlin from New Prague, Minnesota. 
Brian Hansen from Austin, Minnesota. Oscar Quintero Gutierrez from Fairwell, Minnesota. Madeline Troop from Owatonna, Minnesota. Madison Register from Albertley, Minnesota. Jason Eustace from Oseka, Minnesota. Damian Schroeder from Austin, Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and welcome everyone. We really appreciate uh, you being a part of this. So, um, uh, Mr. Watkins, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as I said earlier, I, I have uh, been involved in law enforcement for 29 years. I retired from the Federal Police Department in 2011, uh, and then I moved into my position of full-time teaching. I actually started teaching um, in an adjunct position from 2008 until 2011, and then in 2011, I went to a full-time position here at Riverland. Uh, so people understand our program consists of a great diversity of students which helps fulfill the needed job market. Our program is 51% male, 49% female, and 39% of minority groups. Uh, so we're very proud of what we do draw. We draw not only from around the state, but as you can see, we also draw from uh, different areas of the country. During my time as a coordinator, which is also a faculty member, I have experience where I've seen that the enrollment has seen somewhat of a decline. I can say from 2008 up until about the last three years, we were showing steady improvement or increases in our enrollment. However, over the last three to four years, uh, not only with the obvious pandemic situation that has taken place, as well as the climate in law enforcement, um, and along with the financial burdens that some students are um, being exposed to at a greater level, um, we have seen a decline in our enrollment. With that, we have seen approximately 25% enrollment dip for this. Now, this is equivalent to throwing a pebble inside of a pond. You get a rippling effect because it not only affects the college, but it also affects employers around the state. Um, Mr. Chair, as it was stated earlier, um, the state patrol was having a difficulty in filling um, those positions. We are seeing that in rural Minnesota as well. I could uh, clearly state here that there's several agencies that have had positions open for several months, if not over a year, and they cannot fill these positions. There's not an adequate job pool. And my colleagues, I see Brent here from Hibbing Community College, I'm sure he could testify to the same. Now, while there are multiple reasons for this, uh, my first two I mentioned were that of the pandemic as well as the climate of law enforcement. I've been in this job since 1982, and this is a pendulum, and this will shift. We all understand that. There's pros and cons that we have seen, and it is a natural reaction of society. But what we are seeing is the financial burdens that some of these students are experiencing. And by this committee, addressing this in the workforce scholarship, I think it is commendable. These students need a financial means to be, help them to pay for college. College is not cheap no matter where you go. And this job does require college education. We do this from a multitude of areas of trying to bring more enrollment into our program. We are very active in our recruiting efforts here at the college. Program faculty visit 39 colleges, multiple explore and reserve units, around our region and upper Iowa, as well as attending this uh, State Explorer Conference, which is coming up in the next month. But by doing this, one of the bigger questions we are seeing is, it's very difficult to pay for this. Recently, our college opened up a satellite program for first year, first generation minority students at the Northfield Community College Collaborative. Well, this is a very unique way of uh, trying to fill the job market um, with minorities um, and certain ethnic persuasions. It is also the necessity does come down to is how do we pay for this college? So I would like to encourage this committee to consider this, strongly consider this. Uh, the funds are necessary um, for students because some people just do not have these types of funds available. I think if this was uh, considered and approved, I believe that this would be a strong uh, recruiting tool to be able to take to the community. Um, when dollars are put up front by our legislature, this states, just like Senator Putnam had said uh, previously, as well as um, others on this committee, hey, we have your back. And this is a direct message to the community. So 
I cannot strongly emphasize the passage of this bill, not only for our program, but for other programs too. Being a community college, we have programs which deal in the trade industry and all of them, uh, with the exception of just a few, um, have experienced uh, decline in enrollment. And unfortunately, some of this comes back to the financial burden placed upon the students. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. And a uh, quick question um, in regards to you know, you're, I, you're saying that, you know, if we can have this scholarship available, it can really help uh, maybe some minorities or those who couldn't have afforded it to get there. W what is your type, how have you had your outreach? To, or do you get into high schools? Um, do you advertise? We see you have some folks from other states there. Uh, but how do you reach out to people to recruit uh, to get into the program as well? Mr. Chair. Um, one of the main ways that we do this is we are very aggressive in our program. Our college employs uh, recruiters um, that obviously go to the traditional methods of visiting schools and so on. But what, we are one of the few programs in our college in where the faculty actually would, will go out and do this. We can do so by uh, the means of the internet. We have a very active Facebook um, an Instagram page. This is how these students communicate. But we also actively go out into the schools. We are on the internet. Uh, Mr. Garcia, as you know, who came from the Bronx, um, he located our school um, from the internet, um, came for a college visit, and this was his selection. Uh, Mr. Schumacher over there coming from Indiana, we're a college that offers sports, um, so that is one of the draws as well. But we are very active where we get out and we meet with students. Um, we are starting to ramp that up now, fortunately, because of some of the uh, limitations on the pandemic of being lifted. We're able to get into the schools again. Uh, we do multiple open houses throughout the year. And if we have one student that's interested in looking at our program, we'll come down and meet with them. And that's faculty talking directly to them. So we are very aggressive at this. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Any other questions for Mr. Watkins? Senator Clausen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Watkins, thank you for sharing your expertise and years of experience with those students. That's, that's uh, to be commendable. The question I have for you, uh, is the skills training part of your program? Mr. Watkins. We are the, excuse me. Uh, no, we are the academics portion of this, and we are under agreement with Rochester Community and Technical College, um, where we send our students during the fourth semester, um, the spring semester, and then they finish up their training here at our college while attending skills over at RCTC. Okay. Senator Clausen. Just to follow up, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so Mr. Watkins, how many terms would it take for actually a student to um, be successful in your program and then also uh, taking the skills portion uh, requirement? That would typically take four semesters. So if we have a traditional student coming in, starting the program in the fall session, which typically opens in August, um, by the end of May, within two years, um, and if they pass everything, uh, then they would be on track. So within that two years, it would be a four semesters and they would be able to accomplish their degree. Thank you. Follow up, Senator Clausen. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just uh, comment to the students, uh, really appreciate the investment that you are making in your career and also your investment, hopefully you're making in the state of Minnesota. Uh, hopefully you will stay in Minnesota and uh, pursue a law enforcement degree here in our state and uh, I'd really appreciate your commitment, uh, again, to your careers and starting a, a profession and also to the state of Minnesota. So thank you, and we want to be partners with you and help you financially reach, uh, reach your goals. All right, thank you. We will move to our next testifier, uh, one of the students there, uh, Ms. Priscilla Slozano. Uh, please introduce yourself for the record and begin your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Priscilla Solorzano. Uh, I was born and raised in Minnesota all of my entire life. Um, I want to thank you guys before I start speaking much for allowing me to speak today and um, represent just our our needs as you know human beings, as students, as you know people looking for careers in our life. I want to thank everybody of the committee allowing me to do this today. I want to start off by just explaining why I chose law enforcement and what took me to be here today. 
Uh, I chose law enforcement because protecting the community has always been just a, just a good in general feeling for me because um, I want to make sure my family is in a safe place, my loved ones are in a safe community, and everybody else around, with, around them is safe as well. Getting here was not very easy. Just the financial struggle was one part of it, and the stress coming with that was just the second step step of it. Everybody around here, everybody, all these classmates, um, they have struggled as well. They're students, they're human beings, and everything that comes along with trying to be a law enforcement officer, police police officer, is has been really stressful for everyone. And I know that everybody needs needs to meet and. Getting here was very, very, very strongly, strongly, strongly hard for me. I I started college in 2020. I came here with almost nothing to bring with me. I applied for financial aid, which took care of a lot of things. I'm not going to lie, but still having that leftover was either deciding whether I was going to have my next meal or paying for my college tuition. It, it's a strong decision that I had to make. I, I, this was all on myself. My parents were just, my parents, they were struggling themselves. So putting that burden on them was just not for me. So I was going out there working 17 hour days, making sure I had enough to feed myself, feed my family and, and still go to school. You know, being a full-time student, working a job, making that flexible has always been hard for me. But that never put me in a spot where I wanted to give up. Like had Rich has said, when I first started college, I spoke to Elle, my other instructor, and Rich several times before committing myself to this, this college. I wanted to make sure that I was in the right place, that I wasn't going to invest on something that I wasn't going to finish. But I know immediately that this is where I wanted to be. And I know that everybody around me are standing strong with that same thing. You know, we are just looking for an opportunity, an opportunity to grow in this community, to grow this community in general, to help everybody around us. So I think that this is a very, very good avenue to go through to help financially everyone in this community. I want to, like I said, I want to thank everybody for allowing me to speak today and for just giving me my input into this. Well, thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, we, we love hearing the stories as to how people uh, came to the, the school choices and the career choices they picked. And uh, I guess a, a question I would have, um, is there anyone in your family that has been in law enforcement before that uh, kind of brought you this way? Or was it just something you found and are probably the first family member uh, to go down this route? So my mom was a police officer down in Mexico for 12 years. Um, unfortunately, due to the government and how it works down there, she didn't last very long how she wanted to because of the corruption that comes up in the law enforcement down in Mexico. Um, she would have loved continuing her education here, but she really pushed it. And she said that we need to enforce, you know, better people because we need better people in this community. This is all we have, you know, we need to ensure that our community trusts us. And that's why my mom always, you know, decided to build this path. And she she really was an inspiring person in my life, a, a motivation every day. And that's why I kind of chose this as well. Um, it has to do a lot with just wanting the experience, wanting to help others and having her and her background just kind of brighten me and enlighten me to go this path as well. Thank you very much. And I, I know many times we hear people who get into law enforcement, it is a, another family member has been there. I, I would just wonder, and, if, and with a show of hands, um, how many of our uh, students that are there are the first uh, member of their family ever to go into law enforcement? That is great. <laughs> you know, I think that is something, uh, uh, my background in construction, that was uh, something as well. You, you did not get into to be a plumber or an electrician or a carpenter unless your dad or your uncle uh, had done it previously. So to see uh, so many people, kind of the first ones from their family going down this avenue, um, that is great to see. So 
Um, members, are there any questions for this witness? Um, seeing none, we are going to move on to our next testifier, uh, Mr. Brent Bradley from the Hibbing Community College. Uh, please identify yourself for the record and begin your testimony. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm Brent Bradley, Program Director and Instructor here at Hibbing Community College. Uh, I've been full-time here uh, for the past five years. I am still a licensed officer in Minnesota with over 30 years of experience. Uh, since I've been an instructor here, our average numbers for our first year class was somewhere around 30 to 35. Uh, I hate to say it, this year our starting class first year is only 12. So over half, we're half down um, already. Uh, I attribute it to many things, but one of the probably main things is the cost. Uh, I got the distinction to be able to say I actually attended Hibbing Community College to get my law enforcement degree. Um, what I paid for tuition then compared to what the students pay now is well over 300% higher than what I paid. And it's sad to say uh, the wage I started at uh, compared to the wage now is not 300% higher. So the student has to invest more money to actually make less money than I did uh, over 30 years ago. All right, do you have any more testimony or would we like to move to uh, Mr. Rooney? We can move to Mr. Rooney. Uh, Mr. Uh, Watkins uh, covered everything quite well, I thought. All right, uh, Mr. Rooney, if you could identify yourself for the record and begin your testimony. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, I am uh, Mr. Uh, Class Commander Rooney, I am the class commander of the Hibbing Community College Law Enforcement Program of class of 21, 20, or year 21 to 22. Um, I am in my final year of college um, and I am here to uh, represent uh, all of the students uh, this for today. Um, Obviously, over the last four, three, four years, uh, it has everything has uh, been kind of bad. Tor or, uh, there's been a bad uh, lookout on as of, on law enforcement. Um, I do believe that that is another reason that uh, numbers are down. Uh, but so I respect um, all of my classmates for, and uh, the first year students for do, or, uh, coming to these programs uh, because it, with everything going on. Um, as far as financial side of it, I do know of a couple students in our program who have these financial uh, burdens where they have to work pretty, practically full time and attend college full time. Um, and these or this proposal would help immensely. Um, I know that I personally chose to go into law enforcement because my father uh, is in law enforcement. He's been a law enforcement officer for the state of Minnesota for over 30 years. Um, and I know that looking up to him uh, and following in his footsteps is what I wanted to do. Now, I can't speak for my classmates, but a lot of them that I know of are first time uh, law for or uh, first generation law enforcement officers. Uh, and that that takes the want to go out into the community and help a community and just be there for the people of the community when they are in their darkest times of their life sometimes. Uh, and as far as um, financials goes, I myself has, have a twin sibling and I understand that for many families, if you have two kids in college at the same time, it, 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 the financial burden is quite large. Um, and with these scholarships and uh, opportunities, it would help greatly with a lot of uh, the financial burden of this. 
thank you very much. Uh, members, do we have any questions for either of these two testifiers? Senator Clausen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, Mr. Rooney, I, I'm, you're close to graduation. Could you share with us where uh, you'd like to, to land on your first job? Mr. Rooney. Uh, there, are, there are actually a couple of different areas that I would like to uh, end up. I was born in the Brainerd area, uh, so I down in that area, I would like to end up. Um, when I was in elementary school, I moved up to the Grand Rapids area, and around that area would also be a very nice place that I would uh, enjoy working as well. Senator Clausen, follow up. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Renee, I'm just curious, does your program uh, give you the skills training, or are you going to have to uh, pursue that as, as part of your degree after you graduate? Mr. Rooney. Uh, in this uh, program, our skills, or the skills program is built into our two-year uh, law enforcement program. Senator Clausen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, thank you, Mr. Rooney, and uh, well, speaking for the committee, we wish you the very best in your uh, professional pursuits. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Putnam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to follow up on something that Senator Clausen said and tell you, Mr. Rooney, uh, St. Cloud is hiring. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep that in mind. Thank you. I think you will uh, get that uh, pretty much everywhere in the States. So. <laughs> um, Kind of a similar question I had, uh, this is for uh, Mr. Bradley. Um, how does your program uh, do its outreach to, to get into whether it be schools or you know, to recruit uh, people to come and participate in the program there? Uh, it sounds like our college is very similar to uh, Riverland College. We actually have uh, members that go out and recruit. Uh, faculty here, we uh, do college fairs where we go around to some of the high schools um, the last three years, not counting COVID mixed in there, uh, we've gone down to the Explorers Conference in Rochester where we actually bring our simulation machine down and it's one of the things they compete in down there. So we actually recruit while we're down in Rochester also. Thank you. And uh, probably the easiest question to answer ever, I'm going to assume that if you these scholarships were to go through, it would uh, be another tool you could use in that recruitment process? Absolutely. We would make sure uh, it was well known that uh, uh, students could come here at uh, definitely a lower cost. All right. Members, any other questions for any of the witnesses? All right. Seeing none, is there any other uh, discussion on the bill? Uh, seeing none. Uh, Senate file 2964 will be laid over for possible inclusion. Um, I do not believe we have any other business uh, that we need to take care of today. Uh, we do have our next committee hearing on Tuesday at uh, one, one o'clock and uh, we look forward to that. Uh, we will, we did get word, uh, unfortunately, the university will not be able to be here, uh, but we will hear from the three sports programs, and we can, uh, if we do have any questions for the university, we will kind of gather those, and we'll maybe ask for them to follow up on those um, after their litigation is uh, done, and they would be able to answer that. So, um, with that, the committee is adjourned. <laughs>